keep rolling here for this last example. Okay, I have some, I have some real estate right here, as you can see. Uh, this will be example three. And if you folks decide you want to take a head start on this, just pause this clip and then try it and then play the clip. But here's what it says. A helium balloon. Now, we're existing in fluid here. This air is a fluid medium. And so I'm displacing some air. So technically, there's a very small buoyant force. All these objects have a very small buoyant force because they're in some air. That's exactly what the case for a helium balloon. Only because of the helium balloon's uh, you know, density uh, and volume, the effect of the balloon's buoyant force is much more uh, you know, it's clearly seen. And so in this case, we'll just go ahead and draw this helium balloon. It's in air. So maybe this is a balloon. I don't know. We can draw, maybe draw a balloon like that. And it says uh, it rises because of the buoyant force lifting it. The density of helium is 0.18 kilograms per cubic meter. So I'm going to say rho of helium is equal to 0.18 kilograms per cubic meter. Compare that to the fluids of the water over here. Much smaller by a factor of 1,000. Uh, and then we also have the density of air is given to us right away in that problem as 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter. And it says, draw a free body diagram of the balloon. Okay, well, here's the balloon. And if you draw some forces, of course, the balloon has material. It will have a small weight, mg. And it says that, uh, okay, we know that there's going to be this buoyant force. And we'll make that buoyant force considerably large. Uh, compared to its small weight right there. Very small mg, because it will assume it's a very light balloon. In fact, some problems you just ignore that weight altogether of the material. And that could be the case here. But look at part B. How large a volume would a helium balloon uh, need to have in order to lift a 10 newton block? So we're going to have this 10 newton block down here. This thing it weighs, this thing weighs 10 newtons. That's the weight, 10 newtons. And so we'll assume, therefore, that we're going to have another downward force on this balloon. We'll call that, we'll just label that 10 newtons. It's going to have to lift 10 newtons. And I'm going to go ahead and say, let's ignore the mass times gravity of the balloon. We're just going to ignore that weight altogether um, and just consider the buoyant force lifting the 10 newton uh, weight here. Okay, so that's outside of our system. The balloon will be our system here. So we're going to ex you know, exclude the actual physical mass, but maybe through some cables, it's still exerting a downward 10 newton force, which we've accounted for there. And so how do you figure this out? Well, with forces, you go ahead and apply sigma f equals ma. And what do you want to call positive, up or down? Okay, let's call up positive. Maybe if the balloon is going up, that's good. And so we'll have a buoyant force minus 10 newtons equals m. Now, with the acceleration here, let's take the very specific case where this buoyant force has just started to lift it and it's going at constant velocity. Uh, any more buoyant force and it'll accelerate, but they want to know how large a volume. So we're going to minimize the volume and take the case where the acceleration is zero and it's ascending at constant velocity. This is called an optimization problem. We're optimizing, we're actually minimizing the volume here. Um, so I'll make a note of that. We want to minimize V. So this is a very, this is the minimal case, all right? And so therefore the buoyant force will be equal to 10 newtons. And again, buoyant force as before was equal to density of fluid, volume of object, gravity. So this, again, is going to be density of fluid. This time it's air, not helium. The thing is in air. So don't get those mixed up. Row of fluid, volume of object, times gravity, which equals 10 newtons. And they want to know the volume of the object, so you're just going to have 10 newtons divided by rho of air divided by gravity. Go ahead and type that into your calculators, and you're going to have the volume of the object. It should spit out maybe 0.78 cubic meters. Okay, so I hope that this uh, gives you a bit of a good grasp on this uh, material. Just remember that when you're dealing with buoyancy, you're, asked, you're considering the weight of the fluid that's essentially pushed out of the way by the object. That's what we mean by displaced fluid. So this object, it's displacing fluid. See, the fluid level it rises. And I could probably make it rise enough to make the fluid come out, but then I have to clean up the mess, which I already have. So, all right, take care, everybody, and uh, just keep, keep in mind about your, your uh, fundamental concepts. Free body diagram, second law, very useful here. 
Okay, we're back. I just want to, you know, thank uh, Gage Park and Rob Stuck. Just step around here, guys, and wave, say hello. For coming up and helping me make the clip. And uh, take care, everybody. Cut. That's all right. I had to give you guys credit because it took a half hour.